Hi, and welcome to this latest video. I'm joined once again today by Danny Greaveson. Danny is a certified executive performance coach, and we've done, I think, three previous videos, which have been fantastic and so helpful uh, to people. So thank you, Danny, uh, for joining me once again today. Now, we're going to talk about high performance without burnout. I know a lot of people who watch these videos are perhaps lawyers or professionals, and one of the real, we want to be high performing, but equally, there's a real big risk. And I'm sure we've all seen colleagues around us uh, burn out. So, so Danny, thanks for, for joining me again. Just for people who haven't seen our previous videos, tell us a bit about you and what you do. Oh, thank you, Adam. It's honestly a joy to be here with you again. Thank you for including including me in, in this. So it's probably um, a good idea to give you a little bit of background to, to lead you to what I do, do today. My background is pretty high performance itself. So I started life um, in my career making, making Top Gear, the car program. So high performance cars, high performance people for sure. And then moved to organizations such as Rolls-Royce Motor Cars and the Olympic Games with Coca-Cola. And nowadays I work with high performance leaders and teams in, in high performance, high pressure environments. So I pride my, my work on results that don't lead to burnout. So to give you an example, just this year, I've been working with Deloitte in leadership well, well-being. I've been in prison with Timpson Group, rehabilitating offenders, giving them a second chance in life, confidence for the work, workplace. Um, and I've worked with Porsche in high performance without burnout um, as well. So that's a little example of what I do. So I work with teams of people and indeed people one-to-one -to -one as well. And Danny, when we talk about high performance, well, to you, what, what do you mean by high performance? What is high performance? This is a great question. And a first resource that I wanna, that I wanna um, direct people to is actually the High Performance Podcast. I've been to see it live. The High Performance Podcast. They ask this question with everyone that they, they interview. It's, it's by a professor, Damien Hughes and um, Jake Humphrey. So they asked this question. And when they did their podcast with Johnny Wilkinson, who we all, all know and, and love, won the World Cup for us, um, he answered this. He said, it's giving your very best in the moment, whether you're kicking a rugby ball, whether you're washing up, giving your best in that moment. And I was actually discussing this with a client yesterday, and his, his definition of high performance was giving your best in that moment and enjoying it. And I love that. I love that he said, and enjoying it, because we all know happy people are productive people. So I like that. Giving your best in, in the moment and enjoying it. That's fantastic, Danny. Although as a Welshman, it does trouble me. You've used Johnny Wilkinson. <laughs> Much of that is a great podcast episode. It, it, it still worries me. So let's quickly move away from rugby, especially after Wales's performance. But tell us about burnout. You know, I think a lot of us know it when we see it and Sadly, a lot of our colleagues perhaps have, have gone through it and some of us may have struggled with it ourselves. But but to you, what is what is burnout? Well, in the wake of Jacinda Ardern uh, resigning uh, in January, we we saw that she cited I have no I have nothing left in the tank as her reason for for resigning. I have nothing left in the tank. And that's a recent um burnout phenom phenomenon if you like we've all become very very aware of it since since january however burnout is not a new phenomenon um uh, a chap called herbert freudenberger uh, recognized burnout in the 70s and actually wrote a book called burnout now he cites three key components of burnout which i think we can all relate to i think if you're human you can definitely relate to these three components. And the first one is emotional exhaustion, emotional exhaustion. The second one is depersonalization. So you actually stop caring about things. You, 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 you stop caring so much, you know, you're burnt out. And the third one is a decreased sense of accomplishment. You stop feeling like you're achieving. So I don't know if those resonate, but for me, those those really pinpoint what burnout burnout is: emotional exhaustion, depersonalization, and a decreased sense of accomplishment. So that's a book um, that yes, Freud, from a book that Freudenberger wrote um, in the seventies called 
called burnout. But for me, that that exemplifies everything that burnout is. And I think as humans, we can all relate to those com components. We've all felt exhausted emotionally that we just don't care so much because we're 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 burnt out. And indeed that we don't feel that we're achieving so much and yet we probably are and, and have done but we aren't reflecting on that so so positively so that that for me comprises what burnout is i i think that's so true and uh, as a lawyer you recognize particularly say that emotional exhaustion that toil and that sort of death by a thousand paper cuts you know that you experience especially dealing with very sort of high pressure uh, and traumatic caseload i think that can lead to that emotional exhaustion and then the others that follow. How can we recognize this in ourselves and others? So as we're looking after our own well-being and those we work with and we love, how do how do we recognize burnout in ourselves and others and, and the signs? This is really, really important. So to recognize it in yourself and and indeed people around you. So there, there are a few areas that you'll you'll cite. You'll notice that your your job performance is slipping first and foremost. You, you'll notice that you you're not performing as as well. You'll notice that your your cog cognitive recall isn't as sparky, for want of a better expression. Your your cognition is is not as fresh. You'll notice that you are on a bit more of a short fuse. And case in point, I was talking to a tech leader in February. Now we all know that big tech made those big those, those redundancies, Amazon, Google through um, Q1. And this leader was actually saying that she's noticed through January that it was a really tough January. And I said, come on, January is tough for everybody. You know, it's after Christmas, no one's got any money. Uh, the weather's terrible. You know, January is a tough month. And she said, no, this has been much more difficult people are on much more of a short fuse. And I, I just sense that in the wake of Jacinda Ardern having resigned in January, the economic climate that no one needs me to tell, tell, tell you, you about, and the fear that these big redundancies have created have meant that people are on more, more of a short fuse. But if that's consistent, then possibly you need to consider that you may be, be burnt out. So those are the, those are the, few signs that I am um, I would uh, recognize in myself or others and the other big one um, just to say is you stop looking after yourself so well so you might have two or three glasses of wine rather than one glass glass of wine you might forego the gym for a week or two you might not eat so eat eat so well you stop caring about yourself so much that can also indicate indicate burnout too and if we're if we're seeing those signs or perhaps want to prevent those signs from coming, what are the, the sort of steps we can take to, to, to prevent burnout in ourselves or others? Adam, this is a great question. And the answer to that is so deeply personal. We all have different well-being habits that make us us. So I work with a fantastic GP who hers is writing poetry. To bring her back to herself, she writes poetry. For some people, it's it's connecting with nature, going, going on a walk. For some people, it's socializing. They re-energize through their social connections. So I think this is something that people need to understand about themselves. What is their best or top three top five well-being habits that connect you with you that make you at your very best because I bet if you are feeling burnout if you are recognizing these signs that we've we've spoken about you are you are not you are not permeating your life with your well-being habits. So consider what are your well-being habits because they are so personal. I'll give you some of some of mine, which may which may indeed help. I love watching comedy. I think as adults, as grown-ups, we are not intentional about joy. I think we have to be intentional about about joy because life is tough life is stressful for all of us but being intentional about joy so I ensure that I, I, I watch comedy that's part of my well-being routine exercise of course whatever that looks like some people it's boxing some people it's yoga some people it's going going for a, a walk and certainly for me it's it's connecting with with friends and then also I love to learn as well so learning a new skill a new hobby a new recipe a new sport so something something that that um, generates progress in life. I, I really, really enjoy too. So that makes me feel feel good. And I've got to ask you, Danny, any particular comedy recommendations? Oh, millions! 
millions, absolutely millions. Um, I think, you know, classics like Victoria Wood, Dawn French are absolutely, absolutely brilliant. You know, The Vicar of Dibley, you can't not chuckle at that. You can't not chuckle at that. Um, but then stand up as well. I encourage people to go to their local um, stand, uh, stand up, local comedy club, wherever that is. We're in we're in Birmingham here. We've got the we've got the Glee Club. But wherever you are, there'll be a local com comedy night. Some nights it's good. Some nights it's a bit of a mixed bag. But I encourage I encourage you just to really step step into um, comedy more. And in fact, this leader that I mentioned about high performance, we've actually um, looked at him going and and doing a comedy course. So he might go and do a comedy course. So it becomes a it. So every Monday night, for example, he's he's intentionally laughing and knowing how to make people laugh. As a leader, you can engage people on a higher level because you break down boundaries and barriers with them. So yeah, comedy is really, really powerful. And actually there's science behind it. So it, it um, strengthens our immunity. So so laughing, laughing more, it reduces, it reduces stress. So my encouragement is um, is be intentional about laughter and joy. Absolutely. Actually, one of my secret ambitions, although if I say it now and it's on YouTube, it's not secret anymore, is to have a go at stand up. So, yeah, I've never done it. And I've always it's always been one of those things at the back of my mind, one of those things that slightly scares you, but you'd love to have a go. So, my yeah, my secret ambition is to have a go at stand up. And if you've listened to this uh, this far into the video, you can uh, challenge me to see if I've done it. So, Danny, that that's so helpful. Uh, and I think these are just to make people aware of the signs in ourselves and others, because I'm sure a lot of people resonate with the just being worn down emotionally and then getting that short fuse and perhaps bringing those challenges of the workplace into the home and, and family environment. Uh, and then thinking of those things and, and those self-care sort of steps we can take. And I, I love the idea of bringing joy you know, last night I put a comedy special on Netflix just as I was doing things, just sorting some stuff out after work. And that, that bringing some sense of joy back is so important. If, if people as individuals or as teams would like to work with you, just tell us the sort of stuff you do with people and how people can get in touch with you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Adam. Um, I'm actually working with Deloitte later. And the reason I'm saying that is I want to share with you some research that they have shared with me. And just in, in mitigating burnout is that we are on, since the pandemic, we are on 288% more meetings. Since the pandemic, we have 288% more meetings. So if your diary is full, because everybody is saying, my diary's so busy, my diary's so busy, have a look at that. Like really have a look at that. 288% more, more meetings. So I just I just think that's quite pertinent for people to, to know. That's their that's their research. Um so thank you for thank you for asking. If people want to get in touch with me, it's through my through my website, Lift This Life. Lift as in go go up. I'm all about elevating the experience of work and daily, daily life um, I do work one to one to one with with people and indeed teams so I do a lot in confidence I do uh, work in imposter syndrome I do strength psychology based work and team engagement um, and indeed a lot in high performance without burnout that's fantastic Danny I will put a, a link to all your your website and your social media in the blurb to the video so people can uh, reach out and get in touch with you Danny, that, that's so helpful today. Thank you for just, I think it's raising people's consciousness about this so people can take action and, and achieve that high performance without sacrificing themselves and, and the ones they love. So Danny, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Adam.